my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and welcome to part 9 of the Cigar Box Guitar Build Project. Uh, okay, so today is Monday the 26th of December, uh, Boxing Day for most of you, for me just another day. Um, year on year, Christmas seems a little bit more and more pointless to me, so yeah, and since my dad's gone, I don't really see any point to it at all anymore, so <clears throat> I don't really go that much into it. I'm sure I took the weekend off um, on Saturday, which was Christmas Eve. Uh, my wife and I took most of our staff uh, out to lunch at Sizzler's, which was really nice. Uh, there was eight of us all together. Um, you know, just to say thank you to, to all of our teachers uh, and our helpers um, for helping us to, you know, certainly in the past year, when things have gone absolutely mental, <coughs> just to, you know, to say thank you to all of them for, you know, helping us this past year and, and to look forward to, to the new year. And, uh, you know, I also uh, said a few words for my dad as well, um, because as most of you know, everything I do here is inspired by my dad and unfortunately uh, we lost him uh, back in April um, still very raw for me, always will be. So, anyway, onwards. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'm just trying to think what I did in the last video. Oh yeah, I started to, uh, to assemble everything, so I've got the, the neck uh, attached to the body, screwed and glued, or glued and screwed if you prefer. Um, and um, I've done a little bit of final sanding to the neck, it's now smooth as anything. So, for today, it's basically the rest of the assembly and, and uh, setting it up. So, um, I've got uh, a few tools for the job I'm doing today, or the jobs I'm doing today. I've got uh, various screwdrivers, um, I've got my nut slot files. Now, these were really cheap and they're absolute rubbish. <laughs> So I have ordered another set of uh, nut slot files, which we'll, I'll talk more about uh, at a later date in another video. But these will do for today. Um, they're fine. But, you know, for, for setting up actual guitars, they're, they're, they're just rubbish. Um, so I've got my screwdrivers, uh, nut slot files, um, got my boiled linseed oil, and a couple of rags. And what else have we got? Um, Okay, in this bag is all the hardware um, for this instrument. And uh, I've got the little Allen key in there as well to adjust the uh, saddles for string action. So, first thing I'm gonna do is um, coat the neck with boiled linseed oil, give that time to uh, dry a bit before I um, <clears throat> start actually working on it. Oh, the other most important tool I've got here, my coffee, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, so enough waffling, uh, let's crack on. So first things first, I'm going to coat the neck with boiled linseed oil. Let me just think, make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. No, we're all good. Okay, <coughs> so um, I know that most of you have probably seen me do, do this before. It's a really simple procedure. I basically just bit, get a bit of boiled linseed oil on my rag and wipe it all over the neck, leave it a minute or two, and then wipe off the excess. Um, once whatever oil uh, is going to sink into the wood has sunk into the wood, the rest of it's just gonna sit on the surface and you don't want that, so you need to wipe it all off again. But what I am gonna do first of all is just do a little bit of the, the fretboard. Um, it's very, very dry. Just to show you, uh, a uh, little bit of before and after. Um, it, it doesn't notice quite so much on the wood of the neck, but on the fretboard you can really see the difference. So I'll just basically do half of it first. Kind of just show you before and after. It doesn't matter if I get any of this oil on the actual finish of the body itself. Um, it's gloss finished, so it's not gonna do it any harm. Good, if anything. Okay, so that's half of the fretboard done. So that 
that is before and that is after. I think you can see there's a world of difference. So let me just do the rest of that. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to finish this today. Uh, there really isn't all that much to do. I mean, the, the assembling won't take very long at all. It, it's the setup that's going to take the time. Um, I know that I'm going to have to lower the nut a little bit and obviously make the adjustments at the saddle. Um, that bit is, is pretty straightforward, quick and easy. Um, but doing the nut can be a little bit time consuming, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Um, I've just got to cut the slots deeper and then actually cut some off of the top of the, the nut itself, some material off because it's still a little bit high. But I want to get this coated with oil before I do anything else. I mean apart from anything else, well, once the hardware's on, it's, this is a lot more difficult to do. So obviously, you know, you do it for assembling the, the instrument. <coughs> okay, that's the headstock. Just, there's a couple of little divots in the headstock which I, I've not bothered to file out. Uh, apart from anything else, it will make the whole thing too thin. Secondly, this is a handmade instrument and I want it to look handmade. So I don't care about a few divots and dings here and there. And if the buyer does, see you later. I mean, most of you who, who watch my videos regularly know what I'm about as far as building these instruments. Um, I don't go for a factory look finish. I go for a handmade look finish. And yeah, I know most of the professional luthiers, their handmade finishes look better than most of the factory ones. But, you know, I'm not going to put that much time, effort and money into something that I'm not going to get very much money for because... In Thailand, people don't really appreciate, you know, what work goes into these and they're not going to pay what they're truly worth. So, you know, I, by that token, I absolutely refuse to put in hours and hours and hours of work making them look absolutely perfect when I'm probably not going to get any more money for them than, you know, doing them this way. So, it is what it is. <clears throat> you know, what what is good about handmade instruments, especially this kind of quirky stuff, is exactly that. They're quirky, they're unique, you know, there's probably not another one exactly the same in the whole world, <laughs> as with most of my instruments. I mean, there will be many that are very similar, but there's going to be none that are exactly the same. And that, that's what I aim for. I'm not looking for perfection, I'm looking for quirky, unique, different. <laughs> okay, so um, I may actually need to give that another coat, I'm not sure yet. Um, but the fretboard, oh dear, yeah, the fretboard does need a bit more. Very, very dry. So I'm going to just put another coat on the fretboard first. Wow, that's dry. So, I'll actually leave that a couple of minutes to soak in a bit more. Maybe I wiped it off a little bit too quickly. And while that's doing, um, I'm going to show you um, all the hardware I've got for this. I, I think I've, I've shown most of it before anyway, but just to reiterate what we're putting on this instrument. Okay, so there's my little bag of goodies. And in here we've got... I'm not going to take them out of the little bags. I've got the, the, the bridge and saddles, um, which has got the screws to, to actually attach it to the body. It's got the little Allen key in there as well to adjust the saddles. I've got some strings. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> These are acoustic guitar strings. Um, they're actually numbers uh, two, three, and four strings. Uh, although this will be tuned to GDG, which is effectively the uh, third, fourth, and fifth strings, but um, you don't really get enough tension, so I, I use the, the, the higher strings, as it were. Um, okay, we've got the um, tuners, 
three tuners in there. Again, I'm not taking them out of the bags, and all the little screws are in one of them. Um, that's my string trees with the screws again. And strap button. I've got two or three different screws in there because I, um, I need shorter ones, really, for most of these um, bits and pieces that I'm putting on here. I've got a little bag here with some extra screws in there as well. So that's all the hardware. Let's just pop all that back in the bag so I don't lose any of it. Okay. Right. Okay, let's just uh, wipe off this excess oil now off of the fretboard. Oh, that's better. Much better. Yeah, I just... Sometimes when the wood's really dry, you need to give it two coats, or more sometimes. Um, the headstock, I think that's all right. The, head, the headstock is fine. Um, the neck itself still seems like it might be a little bit dry, but I'm not going to put an extra coat on it now. Um, I'm going to leave it until after I've finished uh, the, the final construction. Um, and see, see if it needs it then. If it does, I can put another coat on afterwards because it will just be uh, the back, the back of the neck, uh, not anywhere else. Okay. Oh. So just make sure I've wiped off all of the excess. It's kind of messy. Okay, I think that will do for now. So, uh, first things first is to attach uh, the bridge. So I'll just move that along there and then uh, I'll zoom in a bit. See, see if I hit it the right way this time. No. <laughs> uh, okay, let's just turn that around a bit. Um, see if I can drop that down a tad as well. Should be able to. Uh, how's that? Okay, so, bag of hardware. Uh, let's just tip it out. Okay, bridge and saddles. Um, okay, so, where's the other screw? There it is. Now, I, I said that I was putting some silver screws in here because I don't have any black ones. Um, and, let's see if I can show you this. It's not going to focus, is it? A little bit. Okay, so they they are silver screws, and you can't really see it because it's not focusing. But I have nipped the ends of the screws off so that they're not sticking right the way through the body. I did, you know, test fit them and uh, realised that they, they were sticking out inside the body a bit too much for my liking, a bit of a hazard. So I nipped the ends of them off. Okay, so. Um, what I am going to do when I when I uh, oh I should say also that I've already fitted the the uh, bridge plate inside. I didn't film it because it's really not possible to show you what I'm doing. Um, but where I that um, knot had come out, I glued that back in, and I've glued the uh, backing plate inside there as well. It's, it's impossible to, to to film that for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the screws is I'm just, let me just zoom out a little bit, I'm just going to put a little bit of wood glue on the screws. Now you shouldn't really do that, but um, because the, shoe, the screws are quite short, I'm a little concerned that they might vibrate loose, um, which is the last thing you want. So I'm not going to super glue them in because that would be permanent. Um, I want them removable if necessary. So the wood glue will hold them, stop them from vibrating loose, but you will still be able to uh, remove them if necessary, not, with not too much difficulty at all. So <clears throat> I'm just going to put a little dab of the glue on this paper towel. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> glue bottles all, all bunged up. Should, that should be enough. There we go. Way too much, but there you go. <laughs> right, so 
Uh, let's find the right screwdriver for these first. Not that one. Maybe that one. That's the giddy. So a little bit of dab, a little dab of glue on the screw. Not too much. Just enough to, as I said, hold them in place, but not make them permanent. Still removable if necessary. First one started. Let's get this part instead. Okay, number two. Just a little dab of glue on the end. Uh, the front one you can't get to the back ones just yet. From this angle, I'll have to stand up to do those. everywhere. I think this screwdriver is magnetic, that helped me a bit. There we go. That's it, one more. Got far too much glue out there, but never mind. Actually, I'll may or may not use it for some of the other fittings as well, I'm not sure yet. Okay, so that's all of the screws in, but none of them tightened yet. Oh, I'll do away with that glue, I can't do that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll very carefully now tighten them up. Just a little bit at a time. forward to this this part has been a long time coming So that's the bridge attached. Can you see that? <laughs> it's all black on black, isn't it? Uh, that's the bridge attached. Now I am going to just dab a little bit of Sharpie on top of the screws now. I may need to redo it again later, but uh, just in case I forget. Not ideal, I know, but <laughs> there you go. Kind of disguises them a little bit. I would have preferred to put black screws in here, but I don't have any. It's no big deal. I can always replace them later if I do get hold of some. It'll take like five minutes. Okay, it's not perfect, but it'll do. Um, okay, I'm going to. I think I'm going to uh, fit the. Um, the strap button first before I go on to the tuners, just, just give that neck a bit more time to dry a bit more. Not that it's going to make a lot of difference. Okay, strap button. There it is. So these come with little plastic washers. Um, rubber actually, I think. Now, the original screw that came with it is, is really long. Um, so I've got a smaller screw that I'm going to try first. And if that one's still too long, I might as well go back to the original and just nick the end of that up. Um, okay, let's just try that. Okay. Right, 
So I'm going to just put this in and see if it does stick right through into the body. I'm pretty sure it's going to. I've already got the um, hole in here from the previous strap button. Now this screw may be too thin for it. I don't know yet. It's going in quite easy, which is perhaps not ideal. So I'll just nip it up, not over tighten it just yet. I'll look inside. My torch. Can't quite see it now. I can't see because I can't actually see the screw because right here, just underneath the sound hole, I've got um, a brace. So I'm just going to stick my hand in there, feel around. That's interesting. It's Barely sticking through. You just feel the tip of it, which isn't enough of a problem to worry about in my, my book. So let me just try tightening it up a bit more. Make sure it's secure, and then I can stick with that, because I know the other screw will be too long. I'd save having to nip the end off, I'd rather just use this one. It's not going anywhere, it's solid enough. Yeah, and it's barely, in fact, I don't think it is sticking through. I think that's just a little bit of the wood on the inside. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's good. I'll go with that then. So, I'll just tighten that down a bit more. That's good. I'm happy with that. Actually, I am going to take it back out and put a little bit of wood glue on that as well. Because it's not, it's not tightening all the way. So just a little, little dab of glue. Oh, still got some on the paper towel there. Perfect. Okay. There's a little washer going on still on there. That should be better. That's not tightening, I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to put the other screw in. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do the same again, just dry fit it first. Um, and see how much, if any, of the, of the screw sticks out inside. I mean, it's going to be quite a small amount if it does, to be honest. screw fits a lot tighter, that's one thing. Right. Just try that. Yeah, that is sticking out, I'm not happy with that, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll nip the end of that off, stick it back in. You really can't see what I'm doing, can you? Okay, that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna nip the end of that screw off. It's not a toughened steel or anything like that. No, is it not? <laughs> okay. Right, so back in. Uh, I will, as I said, again, just put a little dab of glue on there just to stop that vibrating loose. It's not something that would need to come off much, if at all, to be honest. So I'd rather have it secure and not vibrating loose. That's annoying. Tighter fit that one, and it's not sticking out inside. <laughs> All good. Okay, so that's the strap button and the bridge fitted. So it's on to the tuners next. How are we doing for time? I can't believe we've run out of time on this video already. Okay, well, um, that's it for part nine then. <laughs> so we are going to run into uh, a tenth video. But I'm going to do it straight away. <coughs> um, 
So I want to thank you all for watching. If, you please, if you're enjoying these videos, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell and all the rest of it. And we will see you in the next one. Peace out.